In today's video I'm going to be playing a little bit of soul R&B style guitar and I'm going to be focusing on using double stops taken from the major and minor pentatonic scales. It's a really beautiful sound, really useful skill to develop and you can use it for solos or just for fills and developing more interesting rhythm guitar parts. So I'm going to start by playing a little bit for you and you can hear what I'm talking about and then I'll talk you through the kind of techniques that I'm using. So that's the kind of thing, very tasteful, actually very simple to play and it's all about coming up with a nice part that fits the song and when I'm doing this kind of thing I'm thinking about players like Cornell Dupree, maybe Steve Cropper and they were masters at coming up with these kind of parts and there was no flash, no ego involved, it's just serving the song and coming up with something memorable and something beautiful and that's really what it's all about. Okay let's get straight down to business today, I'm going to try and keep this video reasonably concise and what I'm going to do is take you through the little piece that I just played but more importantly I want to talk about the kind of techniques and concepts I was using there and then I hope you'll be able to take those concepts and come up with some similar guitar parts of your own. And the basic idea here is that most of the stuff I was playing just then comes from the major or minor pentatonic scales and I'm just creating some little double stop shapes from those scales. So let me just show you how that works. Let's do this in the key of C major and uh, we've got this position of the C major pentatonic scale so you might think about that as being the E form if you're familiar with the, the caged system you've got your, your root note here which is C, you've got C, D, E, G, A and then you just repeat those notes in the next octave and put this high D on top, I'm sure most of you are familiar with that scale fingering and as far as double stops go when you're using this kind of scale it's really as simple as just joining up the dots in that scale pattern it's actually quite a visual thing on the fretboard so if you take a note on the low E string and then just go to the nearest note on the next string you get a little double stop shape so we've got this one here at 8 and 7 and then 10 and 10 and you just go through the scale creating these double stops series of double stop shapes and you can use those shapes to generate these kind of parts and I'm really thinking about these as just shapes and sounds but in theoretical terms we're dealing with mostly fourths here so perfect fourths so for example if you take these two notes here we've got a G, G a, B, C, G up to C is, is four notes in the major scale so that's a, that's a perfect fourth. So we've got lots of perfect fourths here. Um, except this one here between the C and the E that's actually a major third. So it's mostly fourths you find with these double stops but there's one exception which is this shape here. So a good thing to do would just be to go through your pentatonic scale shapes and find these double stops and play around with them and if you are familiar with all of the positions of the minor pentatonic scale that would be a, a really good thing to try so for example we just uh, looked at this in the E form you could go down here into the the G form it's exactly the same process so double stops through that shape there's, there's the scale shape here are the double stops and you could take it down into this shape here And so on into the other shapes it really is as simple as that really just joining up the dots in those shapes and that kind of caged positional approach is a good place to start I think but very often with these kind of shapes I find myself moving 
horizontally on the fretboard and that uh, these shapes really lend themselves to that kind of sliding around up and down pairs of strings so that might be another thing to think about and you can actually play these double stop pentatonic scales horizontally on the fretboard so uh, I mean, in particular on the top two strings or on the, the next two strings these shapes are really effective so you might take these shapes just on the top two strings for example so that's double stops taken from the C major pentatonic scale once again or perhaps on the B and G strings so And of course, because the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic share the same finger shapes, you can deploy all of this information in a minor key or a minor chord context as well. It works in exactly the same way. So for example, A minor pentatonic, if you're playing over an A minor chord or in the key of A minor, you can use exactly the same shapes. So the notes are going to have a different function. The intervals are going to be different in relation to the key that you're in and to the, the root of the chord that you're playing but all of the same shapes will work. You can just think A minor but play the same shapes. And this is really the next level of actually being able to use this stuff. I mean of course you can think about all of this stuff as just being shapes on the fretboard and that's actually very useful but um, if you want to really be able to use this stuff and get this stuff to fit over chord progressions and songs you want to be thinking about how the notes you're playing relate to the key that you're in and to the individual chords in a chord progression. For example, if we just go back to the key of C major, you want to be aware how these double stop shapes relate to the chord that you're playing over. So against a C major chord, some of these shapes are going to give you chord tones and therefore they're going to sound very strong and kind of settled against the chord. So this shape, for example, gives you a fifth and a root. So that's in the chord, this shape. That's a root and a third, that's in the chord. And then some of the other shapes might be a little bit more colourful. They're all going to sound good, but you've got to choose where you resolve your phrases to. And that's also about listening. That's obviously the most important thing when you're doing any of this is just listening to what you're playing and deciding what you like and what works. And things are complicated slightly when you're playing over a chord progression. And there really you've got two main approaches. You can just stick to the key centre. So if you're playing a song in the key of C major, um, as long as all of the chords are in the key of C major, you could in theory play the C major pentatonic over all of those chords and use these shapes over all of those chords. And that can sound really good. And then the other approach is to change your scale as the chords change. And um, one cool thing about the pentatonic scales is you can follow the chords with the appropriate major or minor pentatonic scale and all of those notes will still actually be in the key but the notes you're playing are going to fit the chords a lot more closely it's probably going to sound a little bit more melodic so for example if you've got a chord progression that goes uh, I don't know, C to F and then maybe D minor then over the C you could play C major pentatonic over the F you could play F major pentatonic over the D minor you could play D minor pentatonic and you could play the double stops taken from those shapes and then it's going to sound like you're playing the changes a little bit and it's going to sound like what you're doing really fits and describes the chord progression. Let's move on to my little piece then and I hope you'll start to see how some of this theoretical stuff can actually be used to create some interesting guitar parts and I want to begin with the actual chords that I was playing over it's really important that you are aware of the chord progression and you understand the chord progression you're playing over before you can start to craft these kind of parts. So I was in the key of C major and starting on the one chord, uh, C major seventh chord, so I'm throwing in some sevenths here which gives you that kind of slightly jazzy soul sound. So I started off with two bars of C major seven. And then went to F major seven, so this is the four chord bars on that and then that just repeated another two bars on C major 7 another two bars on F major 7 and then I went minor so it went to E minor 7 two bars on that that's the that's the three chord so all of these chords are in the key of C major so that's the three minor chord 
going down two frets to a D minor seven chord. This is the two chord in the key. And then I really just repeated that. So E minor seven again. D minor seven, and then to turn everything around, Playing this, this is kind of a five chord, but it's an F with a G in the bass, so F over G, which serves to take it back round again, connect us back to C major seven. And as far as my guitar part goes, I started off in this area of the neck. I do like to connect these shapes with the underlying chords visually on the fretboard quite often. So if you think about that C major chord or that C major seven chord, I can see my C major pentatonic scale around that chord shape and then I've got a kind of access point to find these double stops so from there I'm going so that was my first phrase so just double stops on the top two strings then moving over to here and then down here so uh, notice that we've got this perfect fourth shape on the top strings and it's because of the way that the guitar's tuned a perfect fourth on the top two strings the notes are at the same fret when you play the same interval on the B and G strings you've got the notes uh, on adjacent frets so that's they're, they're all perfect fourths here but then here is our major third um, resolving to that because that's that's in the chord so that's a good shape to come to rest on the harmony changes to the F major 7 and I played this uh, in fact I think I went so you can play these these same notes um, higher up the neck on, on, on the next pair of strings it's up to you whether you play it here or here but I think I did this and here how that fits over the F major 7 of course I'm still playing C major pentatonic at this point but uh, I'm choosing to kind of tailor my note choice to fit the chord and I'm, I'm landing here on these two notes and you can see that visually these, these notes are in the chords so again good to rest on those notes. My next phrase went like this quite simple here C major pentatonic once again this time I'm thinking about the, the G form of the scale so this scale pattern and just finding those double stop shapes sliding up and down perfect fourths then the next phrase So I'm thinking about the chord I'm playing over, it's an F chord, and I'm coming out of this C form of the F chord. You can think F major pentatonic, and double stops from that scale. And I'm departing from double stops a little bit here, so I'm coming down uh, a little arpeggio. So F major 7 arpeggio. And I'm ending with this kind of soul hammer on. So I've double stop but I'm hammering down to create this minor third shape. Then we're going minor so we're going to an E minor 7. I'm thinking about E minor pentatonic here and just finding the double stops within that scale so just finding those shapes trying to find some kind of melody trying to add a little bit of rhythm here and that's a whole other interesting aspect of this is just creating some interesting rhythms you can take very simple materials but add some syncopation add some rhythm and it becomes a bit more exciting so and then I was chromatically connecting down to the next chord which is the D minor 7 and then more double stops here so the double stops from the, the D minor pentatonic scale that time then the next chord is E minor 7 once again I decided to take things a little bit higher up the fretboard so 
double stops from the E minor pentatonic scale up here. Got this little box shape here. And then coming down, down into this shape. And then the, the final lick with, on the D minor 7 chord. So just double stops from just pattern 1 D minor pentatonic. into that F over G chord and then to end taking us back to C with some double stops on the B and G strings. So that's that. I think I'm just going to put all of that together for you at a reasonably slow tempo just so you can see how all of this flows together. So we've got one, two, three, four, one. So there we are, and feel free to learn that note for note if you want to, or you can just mine it for ideas, steal some of those concepts and phrases, and then come up with something a bit more original of your own. Let me tell you about the gear that I'm using today, as people are always going to ask about that. The guitar is, of course, a Telecaster. This is a 52 reissue Telecaster from sometime in the 1990s. Volume and tone are on full. I'm using the middle position here, so bridge and neck pickups on at the same time. And as far as amplifier goes, I'm not using an amp at all today. I'm actually just going straight into my Kemper profiler just for convenience, but it does sound really good, I think. And the profile that I'm using is something called 67 Pro Verb, which I'm assuming is a simulation of a 1967 Fender Pro Reverb, which I think is some kind of lower wattage version of a Fender Twin, but it's certainly got that nice kind of bright Fender sound, which works well for this kind of soul style stuff. So that's all for today. Hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you want Tab and my backing track, both of those things are going to be up on my Patreon page. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.